Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. A very warm well, welcome to this month's family service. It's always great to have our Sunday school here ready to lead us in prayers, in readings, and in music. Thank you for all the hard work and the preparation you've been putting in. I'm really looking forward to it. We've come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to seek the forgiveness of our sins, and to pray for the needs of the world, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. O Lord, open our lips. Let us worship the Lord. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of all, to you be glory and praise forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. As the sun of righteousness dawns in our hearts, anoint our lips with the seal of your spirit, that we may witness to your gospel and sing your praise in all the earth. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God, prayer. Return to our red hymn books for our first hymn, number 658, One More Step Along the World I Go. Let us seek the renewal of our lives in the light of God's love for us, revealed by Jesus Christ. Let us pray. O oh God, O oh God, our loving Father, and Father, we confess that we have sinned against you. We have broken your commandments, we have often been sinned, and we have not loved you as we should. For these and all our sins, forgive us, we pray, through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Father of all mercies, cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, before our scripture readings, the New Life group are going to sing for us. Uh, they're going to sing, Jesus' love is very wonderful and I'm not sure what the second one is, but it's a surprise. <laughs>
thank you very much, Devlin and you guys group. Do you know how you know you're doing well when you're singing? When you look down and everyone else is smiling. And as, as I was looking down this morning, lots of people were smiling because they, they were really enjoying that. So thank you for all the hard work. Thank you as always to Marlene as well for, for playing and coming in and preparing you every week. Your word is a lantern to my feet. O oh Lord, your word is everlasting. Let us then receive the word of the Lord. Our first reading will be read by Reuben. Verses 21 to 28. They went to the Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as the one having authority, and not as the scribes. Just then, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. He, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent, and come out of him. And the unclean spirit thrown him into convulsions, and crying out with a loud voice came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. This is the word of the Lord. Christ in God. <coughs> May all the words we sing and hear and read and speak draw us ever closer to the living word, your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. I wonder how many of you get excited when the postman puts something through the letterbox? Do any of you get excited and go rushing to see what's in the post? But what about the grown-ups? Do any of you get excited 
or do you just think it's going to be another bell? I don't want it just to come in. There's nothing good comes in the post these days. But you know, when I was younger, I used to get excited about the post, hoping there was something interesting or something, you know, something fun, uh, something that I would enjoy. Because you, you just never knew what was going to be in the post. Uh, what happens, imagine you're at, at home and a big fancy envelope comes in with your name written in very fancy handwriting and a big crest on it. Would you be excited? And then you open it and it's an invitation. An invitation to go to Buckingham Palace and meet the King and the Queen. Would you be excited? Yeah. Or to go to maybe Hillsborough to the Royal Garden Party. It'd be great fun, wouldn't it? Look, if you've got an invitation like that, there'll be lots of things you need to do. Uh, first of all, you need to book a day off school. I mean, a couple of days, you might have to go and say, right, to, to the headmistress or the headmaster, I'm not going to be in school next week because I'm going to London to meet the, the king and queen. If you're working, you might have to go to your boss and ask for time off. <clears throat> then you'd have to think, what am I going to wear? <clears throat> what, have I got an outfit that's suitable for meeting the king? Uh, or will I have to go and buy something new? And then you might have to go and book an appointment to get your hair done. And, well, maybe your makeup or your nails. Uh, all sorts of things you have to get done to be ready. And then you've got to work out how to get there. And it's a, a lot of preparation, a lot of thought, a lot of effort. But it'd be worth it, wouldn't it? Would you like to go? Yeah? But why, why wait for the king and see if we can get a, a parish outing for the new life group to Buckingham Palace? See if he can take us in for tea. Yeah. Well, but some days he's got nothing else on him, you can just never know. Do every Sunday we have an opportunity to meet the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And we should be spending time all the way through the week, Monday to Saturday, preparing for that. Preparing to come into the presence of the King. But what would, it, what would it be like this morning if we were here in the middle of church and the doors swung open and Jesus walked in? There's something to think about. What would, you, what would be the first thing that goes through your mind? Would you be shocked? Would you be surprised? Would you be worried? Would you be curious? Would you be apprehensive? Or would it be a, a, a whole combination of feelings? The question is, I suppose, are you prepared to meet him? If you know you're going to meet King Charles and Queen Camilla, you know what you've got to prepare and what you've got to do, and you'll be ready for it. But if Jesus comes unexpectedly, would you be prepared? Well, that's what happened in the second reading. If you're listening carefully, it was in the synagogue in Capernaum, and Jesus walks in one day. One Sabbath day, he comes in, and he's invited to teach. And they were shocked and amazed, because they, they didn't know Jesus. They didn't know anything about Jesus. And they, first of all, they heard him teach, and then a man with an unclean spirit came in and he healed him. Now, we're not amazed at those stories because we know the stories of Jesus. We know that Jesus is a teacher, that Jesus is a healer. We've grown up with those stories and heard them all our lives, and it doesn't surprise us. So, before we look at exactly what Jesus does, how many of you have ever been in a synagogue? Is anyone here? Any of the adults ever been in a synagogue? Well, we should. You're not likely to find one locally. I think the closest one's to be Dublin. Now, there used to be one in Belfast, and it's closed. So it's not an easy thing to do to visit the synagogue in, in this area. A synagogue is a, a little bit like a church, but it's not exactly the same as a church. Uh, it's similar. It's the place where Jewish people met on the Sabbath day, and they met to, to read the scriptures, to teach and explain them, and to pray. It wasn't particularly a place focused on singing and worship or sacrament or sacrifice. That all happened in the temple in Jerusalem. The synagogue was a bit of a classroom where you came to learn. And in the synagogue, there were a number of different officials, people with jobs. The first one was the ruler of the synagogue. And the ruler of the synagogue's job was for ordering a all the meetings, setting the time, making sure that everything was in place and ready for the meetings. Uh, and then there were the people who distributed the alms. During their worship, they would collect alms for the poor, 
and a couple of people will be responsible for taking those atoms and distributing them to the plural. And then there was somebody called, in Hebrew, the Shazam. Now, some of the old versions of the Bible translate that as a minister. But that's not a good translation because it's not quite the same as a minister today. The Shazam's job was to look after the scrolls of the, the Old Testament. So, the, the Bible. The scrolls the Bible was written on. He had to look after them. He had to clean the synagogue and prepare for worship and sound the trumpet to mark the start on a Sabbath day. But the one thing the synagogue didn't have was a professional minister, a person who was in charge of preaching and teaching. In the synagogue, any one of the adult males who was properly prepared and trained could get up and teach. So the ruler of the synagogue would come in and say, right, so today, uh, Jim, it's, it's your job, or the next, next Sabbath, it's gonna be Trevor, next Sabbath, it's gonna be Leslie, and, and different men would get up and read and explain and teach the scriptures. That is a frightening thought, isn't it? <laughs> Letting some of the men loose on the floor. Well, on this particular day, Jesus was the one invited to open the scrolls and read and teach. And when Jesus did that, what, what happened to everybody? Were you listening carefully? They were amazed. Oh, why were they amazed? Well, they were amazed because Jesus taught with authority. See, normally what would happen is anyone who studied the scriptures and started to teach would say, now, we've read this passage from Deuteronomy and Rabbi so-and-so says this about it, but Rabbi, the other Rabbi says something different and a third Rabbi has another opinion and he would give all the opinions of all of the famous Rabbis of the day and he would tell them what, what lots of other people thought. But Jesus doesn't start with what other people thought. Jesus tells them what God thinks. He speaks with authority. And the people are amazed. And they said, what, what is this? A new teaching? It's different from everybody else. He, he has authority. He's not giving somebody else's opinion. He's giving straightforward, clear teaching in the scriptures. You know, sometimes when we open the Bible, there are stories that are easy to understand. And then there are stories which we can't make head nor tail of. And we, we find them really difficult to work through and understand. And that's where people's opinions come in. And you know, lots of people write books about the Bible and tell you what they think it means. And sometimes they'll agree with each other. Sometimes they'll disagree with different opinions. But Jesus had no opinion. He just taught with authority. And it seemed unusual and strange. He made the old words come to life in a new way. I think that's... You know, that's hard for us to get our heads around being amazed at Jesus. Because we know all the stories. You know, when we read the Old Testament, we know that all the stories are telling us that a Messiah is coming, that Messiah is going to be Jesus. So every Christmas at the carol service, we hear that story, a root shall come from the stock of Jesse. And we know it's talking about Jesus. We hear a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name will be Emmanuel. We know it's about Jesus. Every Holy Week we read the stories of the suffering servant who gave his back to the smiters. Uh, we read the lamb to the slaughter. And we know it's all a prophecy, a foretelling of what's going to happen to Jesus. Because we know all about Jesus. So think back to this, to this first group in Capernaum who didn't know anything about Jesus. They knew there was, all, there was a, a, a prophecy of a Messiah. There were all these stories of a Messiah coming. But they didn't know that this Jesus was that Messiah. And so they're amazed. And then, before that even wears off, a man with an unclean spirit comes into the synagogue and cries out. And I'm sure most of them panic. But what we do now, here's, here's that madman again, shouting and roaring and making a scene. What will we do about it? But Jesus simply stops. He rebukes the unclean spirit and drives it out of the man and heals him. And the people are already amazed at his teaching, and now they're shocked at his power over demons. They've never seen anything like it in their lives before. Here in the midst of them, on an ordinary Sabbath day in an ordinary village, is a man who teaches with authority and drives out demons. The question is, are you amazed? Are you amazed at Jesus? <clears throat> or have you heard the story so often 
that you've lost that sense of awe and wonder at the power of God and the love of Christ. But we need to learn again how to be amazed at God. We need to learn how to be amazed at the awesomeness of God, the power of his miracles, that God is a God who can literally move mountains. There's nothing beyond the power of God in this world or in the, world, in the supernatural world. In this world, Jesus, we read his power over the wind and the waves, over plants and nature, over sickness and illness and life and death. In the supernatural world, his power over every demonic force and everything that oppresses us. But you know, sometimes the demons can be wiser than us. Because the demon, we read in that story, the demon was, what did the demon think of Jesus? He was afraid of Jesus. He recognized the power of God in Jesus. And sometimes we take Jesus for granted. He's our friend who's there when we want something, but we forget about him until we need something else. And we should be falling down in awe and wonder, not, not even every week in worship, but every day. We should be amazed at the power of Jesus and the love of God. Every time we read and hear his powerful deeds, we should sit and think, how awesome is our God? And that awe and wonder should inspire us to worship. The lines, as I was thinking about this morning, the lines from two hymns which kept coming into my mind. The first one is, in Christ alone, where we sing, no power of hell, no scheme of man, can ever pluck me from his hand. And it reminds us every time we sing it that Jesus has power over everything. No scheme of man, nothing in this world is beyond his power. No power of hell, nothing in the supernatural realm is beyond his power. Nothing in the world to come is beyond his power. He is an awesome God. And the other one is the opening line of an old gospel hymn. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. And I wondered how many times have we sung those words? How many times have we been truly amazed as we stand in the presence of Jesus? Do we sing the words and don't think about them? But are we amazed to stand in the presence of Jesus? The one who can do anything, who can heal any sickness or illness, who can move a mountain, who can cause a storm to cease. Are we amazed to stand in the presence of that Jesus today? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Can we turn to our sheets again to say, God loves you, and I love you, and that's the way it should be. We should be amazed at the love that God has for us.
We remain standing to profess the faith of our baptism as we say together, I believe in God. I believe in God. The Father of God, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, Lord, who was conceived in the land of the born of the Christ, suffered under the righteous power, was crucified, died, and suffered. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose to He ascended to the he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Father Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the rest of Amen. Our prayers this morning will be led by Aaron and Noah. Let us pray. We turn to our red hymn books for the next hymn, number 112. There is a redeemer.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, holy God, creator, redeemer, and life giver. You have spoken the world into being and filled it with wonder and beauty. For every blessing we have received, Blessed are you, holy God, for people of every language and culture, and for the rich variety you give to us, for every blessing we have received. Blessed are you, holy God, for Jesus Christ our Saviour, truly divine and truly human, living and dying for us, and going before us into heaven, for every blessing we have received. Blessed are you, holy God, for your spirit, the fire of love, burning in our hearts, bringing us to faith, and calling us to holiness in the church and in the world. For every blessing we have received. Creator God, who in the beginning commanded the light to shine in the darkness, we pray that the light of the glorious gospel of Christ may dispel the darkness of ignorance and unbelief. Shine into our hearts, into the hearts of all your people, and reveal the knowledge of your glory in the face of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you, gladden your hearts, and scatter the darkness from the you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you all. this morning. One of, that's on the sheet uh, is the musical evening is next Sunday. So next Sunday night at 7 o'clock our uh, musical evening here and in preparation for that is a choir practice on Monday night at half past 7. Lots more stuff on the sheet. I'll let you read that yourself. One thing that struck me uh, over the past couple of months from, from September to Christmas we have a whole series of appeals for different charities and good causes. And uh, it struck me how, even though it's, in some ways we feel small in number, what we can achieve when, when we work together. We had an appeal uh, for the food bank in September, and we filled two full car loads of food for the food bank. In uh, November, we had an appeal for toys for Cash for Kids, who filled a car load of toys. December, we had an appeal for toiletries for the homeless shelter. We filled the entire boot of my car with toiletries. And then there were the, the cash appeals. In, in October, harvest time, we gave our harvest collections and our boys would give home collection to CMS. Uh, in November, we had an appeal for the hospice and we gave the proceeds of the music reading to the hospice appeal as well. In December, we had a carol service where we collected for pennies for long care and cancer care. And we went out canceling around the village and collected for Parkinson's. And then our Christmas collections go to the church army. Has anyone any idea what we would have collected for those various appeals? The, the total is over £5,000. It might feel like we're giving very little, but in a five or a ten on the plate, and we're not doing very much. But do, when everyone does little things together, it's extraordinary just how much we achieve. And I thought it was worth just pointing it out because we received a thank you letter from one of the charities during the week. And it struck me just how much we have given and raised for food, toiletries, uh, uh, toys for children, and £5,000. And that's just from September to Christmas. So as I pass on the thanks of those who have written to say thank you, that's what they're saying thank you for. So all of us feel like we mightn't have much to give or can't do much, but when we work together, it's extraordinary how much we can achieve. Our final hymn from the Red Hymn Book number 99, Jesus, the name high over all.
us pray together. Be with us. Lord, as we go out into the world, may the lips that have sung your praise always speak the truth. May the ears which have heard your word listen only to what is good. And may our lives, as well as our worship, be always pleasing in your sight. For the glory of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.